support for award-winning New Six has come from the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation and this public television station. This week on News 6, we'll take a close-up look at the help birds of prey are getting from a kitten veterinarian. We'll see how everyday eggs are transformed into Ukrainian eggs, and we'll visit the 1830s-style log cabin owned by a kitten couple. Hi, I'm Brian Hatter from the Kenton Middle School. Welcome to News 6. With our first story, here's Chessie Newman. Dr. Carol Oates of Kitten is an active participant of the Rapture program that helps injured birds of prey. She told News 6 all about the important role she plays. What is the Rapture Rehabilitation and Education Project? The project is involved with uh, taking care of injured raptors or birds of prey. And birds of prey are hawks, owls, vultures, falcons, they're birds that actually eat meat. The um, project will take care of birds that have been hit by cars or if they happen to be shot or in a trap. Then we take them in and examine them, see what their problems are, and we treat them with what needs to be used, whether it's surgery or a splint, and take care of them, and hopefully, until they get in good enough condition, that they can be released back into the wild. The raptors require quite a bit of special care. They're a little bit different than our parakeets and our other types of birds, in that they do need uh, meat to eat. This bird that I have on my fist is a saw-wet owl, and uh, he had an eye injury. He's probably run into a car or a window and injured one eye, and so we had to put medication in that eye. He will, he's got, has a detached retina, so he's gonna have a permanent injury. So he probably will not be released into the wild. What lesson do you hope people will learn from what you do? Okay, I think some of the important things that we can learn is that these birds are an essential part of our environment and they should be protected. Uh, the other thing is that it is illegal to possess one of these birds. It's even illegal to possess a feather from one of these birds. Uh, any work done with these birds, you require federal and state permits. This week's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade of Kenton Middle School. Kenton is located at about 25 miles south of Finley. It was founded in 1845 and has a population of about 8,500. Painting Easter eggs is a once a year activity, but decorating Ukrainian eggs is one that keeps Lois Weatherill busy all year round. Molly Morrison has a story. Mrs. Weatherill showed News 6 the skill and patience he uses to create a magic Ukrainian egg. What process do you follow in decorating the eggs? When I first work with an egg, I put it in the egg lathe and line it up so that it doesn't wobble and that I can just have it roll smoothly around. That gives me my center line and some side lines, and then from there, I can find the top and the bottom point, and then I can draw these kinds of lines. Once the egg has gone through as much design as I want in advance, then I begin to work on the egg. That's when I need the kiska. I heat it in the candle flame. Remember I said this is a brass stylus. And when it gets hot enough, the wax inside begins to melt. It's like a little funnel, so once it's liquid, that wax will begin to just pour out through the bottom. Now I like to test it on my fingernail because then I'm not making a mistake on the egg. Now this one is almost ready to be completed with the pink, but I have just a couple more places to fill in. 
Okay, this one's ready for the final dye color. And I'll go ahead and do that, and then show you what happens at the end. Now, I always need to put it in one more color, or that won't show the lines that I just did. So we'll stick it in here. These are high-intensity food color dyes, and immediately it begins to color. The next step, once it's all done, is to go ahead and take the wax off, so that finally we see all those lines at once. To do that, you have to again melt the wax off of the egg. And when that's nice and shiny, those colors begin to appear for the first time. What do you enjoy most about your craft? I do a lot of different hobbies and different crafts, but I think one thing I like most about Ukrainian egg decorating is that it's a part of a tradition. It's not my tradition and background, but I know that there's a, a lot of history connected to it and a lot of symbolism, and I think traditions are important to carry on for people to pass from one generation to another. This week, Kids View goes to Robinson Field to find out how sixth graders plan to change the world. I'm Amity Berber here with the Quiz View question for the week. And our question is, what would you do to change the world? How about you, ma'am? I would try to stop the wars. And how about you, sir? Um, invent a car that runs on water instead of gasoline. And how about you? Stop pollution. I'm Amity Berber with the Kids View question for the week. Greg and Julie Heights own a dream come true. It's a log cabin they rebuilt using logs from an actual 1830 Ohio log cabin. Jenny Roberts has their story. Mr. and Mrs. Heights, why did you decide to build this cabin? This cabin has always been a dream. I've always loved log cabins. Um, I'm interested in antiques. I'm interested in the mid-1800s. So I decided um, that I wanted to build a cabin with the help of my husband. Why we found a cabin, and um, two years ago, and we decided to buy it and tear it down piece by piece, and bring it home and put it back up. The window openings and the door openings are original. Um, the stairway and the door by the stairway is original to the cabin. Um, the fireplace is the size of a working fireplace that they would have had in the 1830s, 1840s, for uh, a log cabin. There's a beehive oven uh, beside the walk-in fireplace, and they would do all their cooking and their baking right here um, at the fireplace. All my fireside cooking utensils are old and well-seasoned. Um, our table and chairs for the dining area are old. I use old linens. I use the white iron stone um, that is old. And uh, a log cabin that would have been 1830s, 1840s, they would have used painted furniture. So the one cupboard that I have in the cabin is uh, an 1840s painted cupboard. My gardens are authentic to the cabin where they would have had their herbs and their vegetables together along with their perennials and their um, flowers, their things for drying that they would use. What have you learned from working on this project? It took a lot of hard work uh, and nine months to get it accomplished and I feel that the pioneers back in the 1830s and 40s would have really worked hard to get ready for the first winter. I feel real happy about this cabin because it is a dream and it's made me realize that if you have a dream and you have support from your family and that you, you know, this is your goal and you really go for that goal that you can accomplish whatever you want to. That wraps up this week's show. Join us next time when New Six travels to Van Wert, Ohio.